Hey there, today Tony and I are taking you to Harkness State Park to teach you everything you need to know about taking portraits outside. It can be a little bit tricky, you gotta get your camera settings right, you gotta choose the right lens for yourself, pick a good spot, compose it so the background is really pretty, but we'll walk you through every part of it. The first thing we want to do now that we're here is choose our background. Now, here at Harkness, we have a number of options. We have a beautiful pergola back here, we have some greenery, and we even have the ocean on the other side. It's a really hazy day, so the sky isn't very nice. So we'll probably try going with some greenery as a background or the pergola. One important thing is that you don't want your background to be so busy that it distracts from your subject. I can also control the background by raising the camera or lowering the camera just using my knees. Look how much it changes from here to when I lower it down and get the different background in. Lighting is really important and you want to avoid the hard sunlight. You never want the sun to be in your model's eyes. You can see even though it's dappled light, Chelsea has some hard sunlight poking through the trees. And let's check out what the look of that is. Lots of weird shadows. So Chelsea, I'm just gonna have you step, half a step to your left, perfect. What a difference the shade makes. But you might notice that some of your pictures in the shade have soft, even light, but not enough catch light in the eyes. If you need some fill flash, you can use a flash with a diffuser or a bouncer like the Rogue Flash Bender. You won't always need a flash, but it's good to be prepared. I like to dial in about negative one and a half or negative two stops of flash exposure compensation just to dial down the overall brightness so it's not overwhelming. If you're shooting in full sun with a fast lens, you'll probably need to use high speed sync or HSS. Never hurts to have it on if you're unsure. Here's a tip to remember. Add flash to darken an overexposed background. The camera compensates for the extra light from the flash by reducing the overall exposure. As a result, Chelsea's face stays the same brightness, but the background gets darker because the light from the flash doesn't reach that far. Some people like primes for portraits, but me, I like zooms because I can easily zoom from a wide shot to a nice tight shot, it makes the whole shoot just go faster. I also like a fast lens with a low f-stop number like this 7200 f2.8. Check out the difference between shooting at f2.8 and the higher f-stop number. Maybe the hardest part of, of portraits is posing the hands if the hands are in the shot. You don't want to see the backs of somebody's hands. Uh, if possible, have them turned sideways or hidden away. I'm also demonstrating putting something out of focus in the foreground. It's just a great way to add a little touch to the picture, a little something extra. One more thing about the hands. If they're closer to the camera, they're going to be more prominent in the frame. If you bring them more into the same depth of field as your subject, then they're gonna be proportionate to your subject. Every few minutes, take a moment to review your shots closely by zooming in all the way on your LCD screen. In particular, look for hair that's falling in front of the face. While a few flyaways are inevitable, a chunk of hair in front of the face, like this, is difficult to fix in Photoshop. It's much easier just to ask your model to fix their hair. Always check the edges of your frame. You want to crop between the joints, between, say, the wrist and the elbow, or the knee and the ankle, or the knee and the hips, never right on a joint, and you don't ever want to just barely clip fingers, either crop well in or leave plenty of room. For full body shots, your model will look thinner if they visually separate their arms from their body. If you're planning to make eight by 10 prints, remember you're gonna to have to crop an inch off of both sides. So shoot a little bit wider than you might otherwise plan to crop. We tried to grab some shots of Chelsea in the grass, but the sky was too bright. Nobody looks good when they're squinting. Either block the light with a diffuser or choose a different spot. If you absolutely must shoot into the sun, 
Sometimes you can get a few frames by having the model close their eyes, count to three, and then open their eyes wide. When you absolutely have to put your subject in the sun, bring in a second hand and a diffuser to make the shade. Justin will just hold the diffuser up between the sun and Chelsea and cast her in shadow. Check out the difference between direct sun and the diffuser. I can control the line of the horizon by bending my knees. Down low, the horizon follows the rule of thirds and because it's behind her, it adds depth. If I were to stand up and hide that horizon, the picture's much less interesting. You'll never get the horizon perfectly level when shooting portraits. Leave a little room to crop so you can straighten the horizon in post. If you decide to go off level, twist it far enough so it looks deliberate. That's known as a Dutch tilt. The wind was just too intense, so we wrapped up the shoot. If you like that video, hit subscribe to see more like it. New videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And of course, check out our three books, Stunning Digital Photography for Learning Photographic Techniques, Lightroom Books for Learning Post Processing, and our Photography Buying Guide tells you all about gear. Thanks. Click like, share, thanks. <laughs>